Right, everyone, I've, after going down a lot of very, very narrow lanes with nowhere turning, a jeep comes up in front of me in a narrow lane. I've, I've raised my arms to say, there's no way I'm reversing. Anyway, I had a fun, very angry farmer. He was in a jeep, though, and he knew the lane well, and it was nearer for him to go back than me to try and reverse uphill in a camper van. Alberta wouldn't have liked that. Anyway, I'm in a field. I've got to a redundant church of Charlinch. I'm going to go in in a minute in the grounds. I don't think it'll be open itself. There's Charlinch House with spectacular views across the Somerset levels, countryside of me. And down there, a church I went to about two weeks ago is um, Spaxton Church. Yes, it was about two weeks ago I went there on a Sunday. Today's Bank Holiday Monday, August Bank Holiday Monday, and of course after I did Spax and I did Ash Holt and over Stowey Churches. Today I've got a bit of a challenge because apparently um, West Bagra Church is also stuck in the middle of nowhere, so it might be better if I did that walk this afternoon. But I wanted to get this one done. It doesn't matter that it was redundant. I mean, I just went into this farm area a minute ago, and they had a building that was that looked like a church, and they said it wasn't a church. So I thought, well, it looked just like a church to me. It must have been a church in the past. It had everything about it that looked like a church. Everything. So this is Sheila on her rambles with Alberta. She's resting down the bottom. I walked up a big hill rather than put her through it. Rather than put her through it. This is Charlie Lynch House. Big old rural mansion, I expect. Oh, and there's Haywood House next door. Look. All rather Englishified, aren't they? And then um, it says private keep out here. This would be the, behind the church, I should imagine. Um, most of the church, well, the church is redundant now, although it still gets mentioned by the diocese. It's still mentioned, um, but um, it's not actually a functioning church. There's quite a good picture of it there, look. That's quite a good picture of it there. So all I can do is um, say I visited it and got it uh, on a bit of a video. And as you can see, we've got all the beautiful countryside here. It's back from church. Got this big hill here. And um, which I've just climbed. Erected by the parish as a thank giving in 1940. Oh, yeah, for 1939 to 45 war. So, isn't that old, that particular gateway? It's got a special name, I know. Now, I've just walked up a hill from a little camlet down the bottom there. Rather than try and bring Alberta up here and then try and park her somewhere, it would have been almost in impossible. So, I suppose it's just like a lot of churches now. He brought them out safely. Yes, that's a thing up there. Imagine when that was all lovely and new, 70 odd years ago. Here's a grave here. Who have we got here? Agnes Clara Rogers. Died 31st of May 1941, aged 90 it looks, or 80 or 90, 90. Cyril Grant Lane, Rector of Charlinch, 1929 to 1948. He died in 1948, aged 73. And his wife Nesta. He was not for 
he was not, God, for God took him and of his wife. She died in 1981, aged 92. Cremated elsewhere. Because you worry about these old churches, you know, if they're not, they don't come under the protection of anything. Um, you know, you can worry about who... I'll, I'll come back and look at that one in a minute. So there we have it. There would have been a clock on there. You can see the screw part. There would have been the face on that on this beautiful church. And once again, magnificent views. I mean, it's worth just coming here just for the views, to be quite honest. I mean, looking down at Cannington over there, not Cannington, um, Spaxton. Spaxton Church from here, look. All the various little churches that would have been in the different dips and vales, valleys here. I've got to drive through Spaxton in a minute. I've got to make a decision. <sighs> this very, they're very difficult to get to, these churches. Very difficult. Oh yeah, there's a way out there. It's going to be this, do you know what, this is going to be the hottest bank holiday Monday ever recorded today. Apparently. <sighs> Emily Maria Waring Irwin. So I've got Irwins in her family. And the Reverend P. Nesbitt Irwin, rector of this parish, who died Sunday the 28th, October 1860. And Devere and Alex Ander Irwin, the eldest child, died in 1876. Now, the redundant ones are just as important to do. They still need to be recorded, otherwise they fall into ruin. They fall into ruin otherwise. The Tower House, formerly Charlinch the Blessed Virgin Mary, is now a private residence. Access to the graveyard to the south and the footpath only, thank you. Restored in commemoration of the Jubilee of Her Majesty Queen Victoria in 1887. So this is now a private residence. You have to go online to see what it looks like inside everyone. Like that church down the hill, that that residence down there, that was a church. They weren't going to admit it was a church once, though. In loving memory of Charles Jeffrey Bubbear, died 1964, so Margaret Elizabeth Bubbear, 1977. There are some stained glass windows. I wonder if this is part of someone's house inside now, maybe. Could be, couldn't it? It's still allowed visitors. Oh, here's a nice little walk here if you lived local. Look. Look at that. A nice little walk there. This is where the curious come. It's just to see the back of the church, really. Let's see the back of the church. This is all burial here. Or 
burial. This was probably an overspill of the graveyard once. It hasn't been actually physically turned into a residence yet. would have all been graves, see? Right, I'm going to take some photos now, over and out. Right, well it is quite a spectacular redundant church. You can see why it is so redundant now. I mean, it's very difficult to get to, very down narrow lanes. Um, and you can see why Spaxton's taken over the main role. It's got some interesting graves in there. I've taken a note of quite a few of them and the scenery here from up here is fantastic. It'll all come out a bit misty and because it's there is a haze. It's a beautiful um, scenery here. And the church. Oh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful church. I mean, no one's living in it yet. It's a lovely, lovely church. I'm just sort of taking a note of some of the graves and most of them I'm scanning. It's always a good idea to because you never know what's gonna who might turn up. And of course in modern graveyards if they start leaning like that, there's a few leaning and they knock them down. I think it's called St Mary the Virgin, or it was called that. I better not miss this one out. God, there's such a nice sweet smell. Who's this here? Herbert Mitchell. Son of Henry Mitchell of let's not say Smith Smithick. And Dorothy Mitchell. Yeah, it's a beautiful church. It's well worth visiting, even if you can't get in, because you can't always get in churches anyway. Not easy to get to. Not easy to get to at all. Let's just go and have another look a minute. See the name again. The Blessed Virgin Mary. You can see where there was faces once they've eroded with time. That would have been a face once in that little oak over there. And same on the other side. I'll have to go online to find the history. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll have to go online to find the history. <sighs> what a beautiful view, though, from out here, look. Isn't that beautiful? Over and out, everyone.